everything in life. And just because you've proven to me that uh, this guy Darwin had some good ideas, people right, aren't going right. to do that. So what we have to do to give people a place that they can uh, come out as an atheist and, and be an atheist to be intellectually honest with himself is develop a community uh, much like in some ways like what churches do that gives them somewhere to land. Uh, and what I mean by community, I'm not talking about, you know, little communes where, you know, everybody lives South Ballard and we're in a little, you know, commune. But what I'm talking about there is a connection between people where when someone gets married, there's an efficient, there is someone to do the ceremony. When someone dies, there is that network of support that helps with the grieving and helps that person adjust with their loss and Bring help some casseroles. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, feeds the family, takes care of the things much in the way that the church does. Uh, when Deanna was recently in the hospital, we realized there's no such thing in Washington state as humanist chaplains. So there was no chaplain to visit. And I used to be a chaplain 12 years. I know what chaplains do. They do a whole lot more than just lay hands on people. Or as we used to say, they do a whole lot more than lay people. Uh, the chaplains, uh, the chaplains, you know, they know where the heated blankets are. They know when you've got a question, they know who to go to to get that answer if they don't know the answer themselves. There's so much more that they do as a liaison for the patient than just the praying thing. And we didn't have that because we don't believe in that particular person's dogma. Well, as the humanist and atheist community, I believe it's time for us to start developing that, to start developing those different areas where, you know, and right now is a great time. We have meetup.com. We have all these social networking tools. You know, the Bible is a powerful thing and uh, it's bullshit, but bullshit can be pretty powerful. <laughs> and it gives them a focal point that they build their community upon. And we as atheists, because we don't believe in God, really don't have that focal point. But what we do right now, see, the Bible gives them license to manipulate people and control people and promise them things that isn't true and all this kind of stuff. And you can really grab a hold of people with that. But as an atheist community, what we have is science. What we have is logic. What we have is things that can make a better humanity based not on promises and pie in the sky, but based on uh, studies and science and ways that we can improve humanity. You know, we can develop vaccines and get those vaccines to more people and eliminate diseases. Religion can't do that. You can't pray the disease away. We can, uh, so many areas where advances and not just scientifically, but I think where we need to go now is socially. Uh, when you look at socially, you know, technologically, we are eons ahead of where they were in the Bible. Back in Bible days, there were, you know, what was their main top uh, line of, of transportation was some kind of buggy pulled by some kind of animal. And right. now you look, we've got the space shuttle. We have space stations. We, you know, can send probes to Mars. I mean, technologically, you can't even compare. But you look socially, we're in the same place they were back then. You hate people that aren't like you. You gather your own little people together and fight the ones that are different from you. You know, it's exactly socially where we were back then. So it's time for us as a species, I think, to develop socially. And there's nothing better than the skeptic humanist community to bring that about. Yeah, you know, a big part of our, um, our community right now is online. And I would love to be able to bring that into meet space as it were you know and um some some groups are definitely doing that you know meetup.com like rich mentioned has eight bazillion skeptic and atheist meetup groups places where people you know don't just develop their relationships with each other off online but they they go do things together offline they have pub hours and talks by people uh you know experts like greta christina come and do a presentation for the group um just recently, Seattle Atheists did a uh, river rafting trip where they all got uh, 
one of the inner tubes, you know, and they went floating down the river, that kind of stuff. And those are the kind of things that churches normally do. You know, you go to church and somebody comes and speaks, or you go with the church ski group, or you go with the church youth group, you have a picnic, whatever. And that stuff is starting to happen. Um, there's also a lot of groups like um, xchristian.net, which is you know, all about providing support to people who are leaving Christianity. And I'm, I've no doubt that there are people on there who know each other in real life because it's such a big online board. So many people can go, oh, my gosh, you're in Seattle, too. Great. Let's get together and have a beer. Um, uh, there's a uh, projects like uh, Vicki Garrison's Take Heart Project. She runs the No Longer Quivering dot com blog, which is about, uh, you know, ex women from the patriarchal quiver, quiverful movements and uh, the Take Heart Project. She's assembling uh, information for people who are leaving um, things like, you know, psychological information. So these people can give that information to their friends and family, to their psychiatrists or their therapists, you know, so there really is like a storehouse of all that information to kind of help people leave. And that's what we're trying to do with Living After Faith is, you know, just by telling our stories and, and all of the people who we interview stories, we end up making people feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. There are people like me. They've been through what I've been through. And even that little bit helps. But, you know, we're also able to extend that help to, to more real life situations. Um, we recently got an email from someone who um, I can't remember where he lives, but he's he wants to move to the Seattle area. Yeah. And he was asking us, you know, do you know, uh, do you have any ideas like, you know, how I can find someone to rent a room from or, you know, I don't have very good credit. So, you know, if you know how to how to find, you know, housing or apartments that would rent to me. Um, and he's in the closet about his non-belief, so he has to keep it on the down low. And we, you know, we started recommending and, and telling him our experiences renting and, and got in touch with some friends. That's the kind of real life help that we atheists can give to each other. And, you know, we are creating community little by little. I, I think the next step, though, a big ass building. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> I think I was talking to Rich yesterday and telling him a lot of those things we definitely need. But the, the greatest asset in the atheist community is the one that kills us the most. It's our atheists are like herding cats. You know, we don't want to be followers or group together with everyone. We, we kind of scatter and do our own thing. But we have to find a point, something common to come together on like religion does. Well, have the same outlets where people be, can be comfortable to come out where they know to be another support system. Where I think that, that that's going to come from, it, you're right. See, the Bible is that thing that Christianity, uh, the Quran is that thing that Islam can gather around and say, this is our common thing. It's awfully hard to do that when the only common thing we have is that we don't believe something. But what we can do is focus on some things that we as humanists do believe. I believe in humanity. I believe that there is no God to help humanity, so humanity has to help humanity. So I believe that we can build on the concept that we understand that as humans, we're going to have needs. I also understand that as a human, you're going to have needs. So the only way that logically I can expect to have help when I have needs that I can't accomplish myself is if I'm willing to invest and help others when they have needs that they can't meet in themselves. So what it is, it's simple logic. It's simple understanding of what humanity is. And not everybody has to be involved in everything. For instance, you've got your uh, Dawkins and Harris and Hitchens and Dennett and tons of authors out there providing tons of great counter apologetics, uh, great stuff like that. That needs to be done. But it'd be pretty foolish for me to jump into counter apologetics at this point, as good as they are. And, and, you know, how would I even begin to speak on evolution uh, on a level with Dawkins? I mean, I, I struggle to understand what he's got in his books, you know, so I couldn't right. I couldn't have that conversation. But I, I am uh, involved in or have been involved in the Christian social end of things for a long time. So that that's where I should go. So you do need the counter apologetics people. You do need the people out there, you know, who are suing all the little schools who insist on having prayer, uh, before football games and stuff like that. They need to be sued. They need to be made to follow the laws 
of the land. They, they don't get the privilege of being able to say, you know, freedom of religion as long as it's mine. You know, so, you know, there is a branch that needs to do and FFRF and uh, American Atheists, they're doing a great job with that. They are fighting that fight and doing a great job of it. So what what I foresee is people playing a bigger role in the area that fits them the most. When we talked to David Silverman on our podcast, he said that he believes that the biggest group of atheists is is not the activists. It's not people who are out. It's people who are still on church pews, you know, and if we're going to be able to get those people to be comfortable to be the atheists that they really are, there's going to have to be social development that takes place as well. So I think as a movement, we're doing a great job in a lot of areas, but there's some areas that we can really step up and raise things to another level. I agree. I definitely agree with that. And also I want to ask, uh, since you guys are in Seattle, that's a big place for free thinkers. What type of programs do you guys see in Seattle that other places around can uh, start to uh, put together themselves? Well, there are a lot of groups here that are, uh, you know, atheism and skepticism based. So, uh, that is a fantastic place, of course, for community. We have uh, groups like the Humanists of Washington. They've been around forever. Uh, Seattle Atheists and Tacoma Atheists have their own groups, as well as uh, the Eastside Atheists and Agnostics. Auburn. Th- uh, Auburn Freethinkers Society. Um, all of these just within, you know, 20, 30 miles of Seattle. I'm sure there's some I'm forgetting. And, uh, you know, that, of course, is a big place to start. Some of them are just, you know, social meetup groups, and some of them are, you know, actual whole nonprofit organizations. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, they they go, God, I want to go to, I want a group of people. I want uh, a, a meetup full of skeptics and atheists. And how do I find that? And they look around and they don't see one. And they miss the very obvious conclusion. You can start one. Yeah. You know, I, it's something like $19 a month to have a meetup group. Cheaper if you pay for a few months at a time. You can ask your members once you have them to, you know, chip in a fiver here and there. And, you know, schedule social hours, find speakers. A lot of people will come and just do this for free. Yeah. Um, Seattle Skeptics, I know, doesn't really have a budget. And they have people like Ben Radford came and spoke with them. Um, I think they uh, chipped in for airfare, possibly mm-hmm. in hotel, but, you know, things like that. It's so easy to just suggest something or, you know, with a, a recent, we were sitting around talking with people about, you know, they said, well, you know, I want to go to these meetups, but, you know, I can't go to the bar with kids or I, you know, can't do it on a weeknight or I can't do it on a weekend. And, you know, everybody's talking about scheduling and how, you know, oh, I can't afford to do this. And, you know, the the suggestion is so easy to make. You just send a note to the organizers and go, hey, I want to meet up with people at this place and let's try for this time. And they'll schedule it for you and you can all just show up. You know, it's it's not such a formalized thing to gather a group of people together now it's very easy to just throw something up on the web get a facebook event together whatever and and everybody can have that community you know one thing that uh just an example of how you can do it a good friend of ours scott uh hosts a meetup at the blood bank and uh, he is probably given more gallons of blood than a human ought to be allowed i mean he has (laughs) never missed a chance to give blood but he encourages other people to do it. And here you've got all these atheists who are giving blood. You say, well, what does that have to do with atheism? Absolutely nothing. And that's why it's so beautiful because we don't have to be, uh, everything centered on the fact that we're atheists. We have lives and uh, giving blood is something that helps everyone helps the whole society. So, uh, when the blood banks are running short and having, you know, that critical time when they need blood, who they call, they call this atheist guy and say, can you get any of your people to come in and give blood? I mean, that just in a very non-confrontational, just openly giving to society automatically raises the view of atheism because here you've got this atheist guy that if we pick up the phone and call him, he can get some people in here and we can save some lives. So just a simple idea of what turns you on? What is your thrill? And here in Seattle, we have a lot of things. There's movie night in the lion's den one night a month where uh, 
your price of admission is to bring yourself <laughs> and you come and we're going to watch a movie of some sort and have uh, just good conversation and probably chips and dip. But, you know, it's so simple. 